So after all the testing of these paints, what do I think? Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. My final thoughts on this paint system, we've done a lot of testing over the last few weeks to understand the current full range um, of the relatively new ICM paint system. And there are some uh, plus points, some uh, points I think ICM need to consider, um, but in the main, I am deeply impressed with this um, paint system. So let's talk about the things that I like about it. Firstly, I like the fact that they come in a proper bottle that you can get in and stir. Um, it also gives you access for a, a paintbrush so it's easy to decan out. You're not relying on a dropper bottle that can clog and cause all sorts of problems. Um, I think the, um, the the bottles are easy to use. The, the um, top is easy to get off. Um, just everything about accessing the paint um, is really good. And of course, the other advantage of having a, a proper uh, bottle is that you'll use a lot more paint than if you're uh, just taking it out of a dropper bottle because uh, you can get in better. Um, and you'll have some good bottles when you empty one. You'll have some good bottles for um, your own mixed colours and what have you. So um, I, I like the um, way they're presenting the system in the first place. Um, so that's a, a big plus to me because um, I, a lot of acrylic paints have now moved to dropper bottles and they're okay when they work, but you get lots of problems with them. So you get, so with dropper bottles, you can have problems such as clogging, um, not being able to mix the paint well, especially if the, if the paint's been stood for a while. Um, you can have other issues like um, the amount of paint that you you can deliver through a dropper bottle is a is a measured amount depending on the size of the uh, nozzle opening. Um, so actually um whilst the sold as being convenient for people who are using an airbrush actually i i don't think that they're that convenient um and i think um we've all jumped onto a a bandwagon without really thinking about it and just listening to what we're told and and not actually accepting um the fact that it's not an improvement at all so uh, i prefer um, a proper bottle and ICM deliver that. So that's my first big tick. Um, second thing, they're acrylic. So we've got completely no odor uh, whatsoever. So for many of us that are working in a, a family home, in a space where there's other people, um, th these paints are perfectly fine to use. So you're not going to have issues with odors. You're not going to be getting headaches. You've not got to be in a, vent, uh, um, a vented room. So they're, they're much more um, accessible paint because they're acrylic than many of the common paint systems, including uh, Tamiya, because Tamiya have uh, even their um, so-called acrylic range has, has, has a relatively strong odor, uh, but there is no odor uh, at all to these. So that's, that's the second uh, big tick. Um, what we've found through doing our um, tests is that these mix really well just with water. So that's a massive advantage in terms of time, in terms of cost, in terms of flexibility. Uh, but we have found that there are some thinners out there that will thin the paints really nicely. Um, so we did some experiments and we know what we can and can't do with thinners. So that's that's really, really helpful. But I have found water works well. Um, so I, yeah, it, it's really flexible from um, that point of view. And I would very much like Ultimate um, to uh, add that onto their list of paints 
that you can adjust with a thinner. Although we found that Ultimate wasn't the best, it did get there. Um, but yeah, water seems to work really well. So that makes it uh, affordable for those of us modeling on a budget um, and it makes it um, accessible and easy to use and it continues with having no odor. So I like that. I think the range of colors is very, very well thought out. So we have a range of metallics that is very, very strong that you can mix together. Um, some of them uh, naturally will be a, a nice wash on top of another. So uh, yeah, I think it's, it's well thought out and the colors that um, you would use. So even things like the burnt tin, that's a colour you can use straight from the pot for things like the um, um, engine cowl ring on a uh, on some World War II aircraft, for example. Um, so like a swordfish. So uh, there there is a well thought out range of colours um, and that extends all the way to the clear colours here where every possible lamp um, where you might want a clear colour has been thought of. So we've got um, orange, orange and yellow, which are a fairly obvious clear colours. We've got a smoke black, which can uh, do all sorts of things with the uh, smoke black. Then you've got blue for things like um, police uh, siren lamps. Um, and then you've got the red and green that you might want to use on, on ships. So the clear colours are well thought out. Um, that there is a, a good range of greys, which is uh, a, a most common colour um, amongst all sorts of uh, models, uh, and then uh, greens, and then that extends into things like the more earthy colours and variations of the earthy colours, a nice variation of red, including a couple of uh, flesh colours there, um, which is really nice. Um, um, just two blacks, a standard black and a, and, and a tire black. Um, but um, we don't want to worry about that because we can mix all these paints and then uh, a range of four whites. So uh, a very nice kickoff range of paints. And I'm sure that over time, um, they will probably expand the range of paints that they do. Um, but this is aimed at plastic model builders. So unlike um, Vallejo, who cover all sorts of different uh, genres with their um, paints and different types of artists, this is aimed just at people building plastic models and most specifically ICM plastic models. So they release these paints in, in uh, sets for their models. So they're covering off what most plastic model builders are going to need to use. Um, the varnishes, three varnishes, a gloss, a satin and a matte. And we found that they work um, really well under brush um, as well. They do need a little bit of working into place, um, but once they dry, they dry nice and hard um, and have a good uh, overall um, look. So I thought the varnishes were fine. So we end up with a good range of paints that can be mixed to create a, a much wider palette of colors than, than what you already have. So you can, you can mess around with blacks with a, a little bit of gray in and get the exact color you want. So yeah, um, downsides that there's inevitably going to be some things that you, you wish were better. So uh, my obvious one is the size of the varnish bottles. Um, I, I think they're too small. Um, I would like to see uh, bottles that were bigger. These are all 12 mil bottles. I'd like to see um, a, a 30 and a 60 uh, possibly uh, of these. Um, I understand why they're this size. They're this size for putting in their sets, but you want people to be topping up their sets and buying paints individually and their varnishes individually. And you use disproportionately more varnish compared to the other uh, colors that you're putting down on a model. So um, we need um, bigger bottles of that. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will come. So uh, yeah, that's um, one of the downsides. Um, 
other downsides. Um, I, I can't, I'm struggling to think of any. I, I, I really found the uh, paint system worked really well and covered um, all of my bases. It's airbrushed well and even with demanding colours on dark backgrounds in a, in a warm room which wasn't ideal for, for painting, I had no real issues. So I, I find the system a, a really, really great system. Other downsides right now is accessibility. Um, it's not easy to buy these paints separately. Um, you can buy them in the Ukraine separately, but the cost of shipping them makes it um, a, a non-starter. So you're really only accessing these through the um, 80 uh, jar set, which, um, which is what you see here, or through um, the individual paint sets. Um, and that's okay for kicking off, but it's not a good long-term solution. You need to have these paints as separates um, in the market, um, in all the markets that you're you're selling them. So I'm hoping um, that will come. The other disadvantage I've found is that they do have their own range of thinners, but I've not been able to get them in the UK. Um, so fortunately, we know what we can do with thinning, but if you, like me, like to use the right thinners for the right paints, then um, that's currently a downside. I'm sure those are all things that are gonna get addressed. So in summary, I think what ICM have done is a very um, good product, well thought through, um, and offered it to people in a way that is uh, affordable. So if you buy a kit and you want the paint system for it, you get that. The shortfall of getting the paints um, piecemeal is that inevitably you're only going to have the main paints and not all the paints. So um, a kit might call out 10, 12 paints that you actually need and you're only going to get half a dozen of those in one of their paint sets. But the actual range of paints as you can see here is a really good range of colours that covers all modelling genres except possibly um, cars depending on what you want to do with body colours but um, I, I found that I could add metallic silver to um, one of the pinks and turn that into um, a, a nice metallic colour um, I've done that on my Queen Mary 2 uh, we made a little drum set and we made it a sparkly pink colour uh, and it worked fine so mixing the metallics with these gives you a whole range of colours for car bodies as well. So I think most modelling genres are, are covered in this. Um, we found that the paints were more robust than Vallejo under um, scratch testing um, and as flexible as Vallejo to use, um, but just that little bit um, easier. Um, so I haven't come up with um, some form of thinning ratio where I say you definitely need 50%, um, but what I would say is the range that ICM give you is 40 to 60%, and I found that around about 50% was the right sort of mix for the, for the uh, standard paints, and that some of the metallics was less than that, it was just a moist brush. So you do need to play around with them and find what works for you and your style of modeling and model painting. Um, but you're gonna see me using these a lot more on future builds. I have a build coming up after the Gota um, that I, I intend to use purely ICM paints on um, just to see how we get on with painting and with weathering. And I'm sure we will learn more about the paints as we go, but right now, what I would say is, if you've seen ICM paints and you've wondered about them, uh, but haven't dipped your toe in yet, give them a go, because I think, like me, you're gonna be quite impressed. 
there you go that's my summary on the icm paints um, i hope what we've done over the last few weeks has been uh, useful uh, and helpful um, especially if you're new to the hobby and you're just starting to build up your paints this is a, a cost effective and accessible range of paints that will do most modelers uh, needs most of the time i think Okay, thank you very much for looking in. I hope this has been a helpful series. Um, if it has, there's an option at the bottom of the video to hit super thanks and if this has been helpful to you or you've found it really fascinating, you can hit super thanks um, and donate a small amount to the channel um, and all monies go into buying products like this um, and, and kits that we can review on the channel. So thank you very much for your time. You enjoy your modeling and I will see you very soon.